I'm and now my commitment is to support each and every one of us to be the best we can be. If I buffer your mirror, if I buffer you to bring up your brilliance and not let it stay on the pillow of a new dawn, because you have brilliance, but if I buffer your brilliance to be the best it can be, this is what happens. I buffer you, I buffer you, I buffer you, and I get to see myself more clearly in your beautiful reflection and then know myself more clearly in the next second of my life. And that's enough for, for me to know that my compass is on a true and authentic path. On the road, you cannot control the world around you. What you can control are your thoughts, the integrity by which you live, and how you choose to make a positive difference in the world. Your life and your legacy are in your hands. our lives from the inside out, there are things that can happen to us that we cannot control. Things that can catch you on the blind side. And it's a place that you go, perhaps as St. Francis talked about, Lord grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. I can't change what has happened. The courage to change the things that I can. I can change how I'm going to respond and the wisdom to know the difference. Most of us are reacting to the outside circumstances and we're allowing the outside circumstances to control our thinking, our feelings and our behaviors. Because if we're just automatically reacting to everything that goes on, then we're really tapping into our more animalistic nature and we're not thinking about what's in our own best interest. If we give ourselves a moment to pause, then we give ourselves think time to be smart and think about what is really the best approach in that situation. Oftentimes in life, the questions that we ask ourselves immediately after a stimulus will determine the quality of the response that we make. The question you have to ask yourself is, how high of a quality response do you want to produce in life? When is the last time that you made a decision in haste and had the optimal outcome that you truly wanted? What I've learned is when something happens, that's this moment. Pause right here and then respond. When you pause, you're able to see with clarity what your choice is. When you respond at that point, you're coming from a higher state of awareness and a higher state of consciousness. So learn to take a deep breath, pause, and then respond rather than react. Staying focused is a matter of reassessment on an ongoing basis. Sometimes our path is not a straight line. Most often it is not. So it's about gathering all the information that you have at that time and figuring out how you will use this information going forward to get exactly what you want. You're going to have a lot of failures, a lot of disappointments, but those are not things to stop you. Those are things that will build your character. And as a result of those things, you will grow through those things and begin to discover some things about yourself that you would not know otherwise. Start seeing the challenge as a part of the quest. When you do that, you can embrace it versus resist it. All you do every single day is you achieve one mini goal that moves you in the direction of something that's important to you. You will have this feeling of forward progress. You will be internally motivated. You will feel excited and positive about yourself. Your self-esteem goes up. You feel like a winner. You have more confidence. 
if you just achieve one little goal at a time. You've got to hold the vision even when you cannot see any tangible results or any of the activity that you're engaged in are working. And through persistence and patience, did I say patience? Yes, patience. You continue to move forward, things will begin to appear. We have to make sure that we are not going through this thing called life malnourished. And unfortunately, we do get in places where we find ourselves mentally, emotionally, and spiritually malnourished. So give yourself what you need to make sure that you can actually deal with what you're growing through. Not going through, but growing through. Listen to something positive every day. Read 10 to 15 pages of something that will help to nourish your system, nourish your spirit, and give you what you need in order to win in the game of life. Especially on the hard days when you're getting thrashed, when life is hard, pause, breathe. It brings your attention into the now. And when your attention is then here in the now, you find yourself knowing intuitively, viscerally. You find yourself knowing what to do in order to solve the problem that was bugging you. And remember that the date that it is today will never be the same again. Wake up in the morning when things seem slow, look at your calendar and realize that that day is the last time you'll ever see that day, so make it good. It's very possible that you're being a passenger and not the pilot of your life. And you just have to take control and make that decision to live with intentionality. It's not always going to be easy. In fact, sometimes it's going to be very difficult. It's persistence and desire that gets everybody over that difficult hump. dress rehearsal. This is it. So don't hold back on your ability to give. Find ways to give. Be creative about giving. Get excited about giving. There are people that need you to find a way to give into their life. And I encourage you as you're giving, understand that he who gives, it shall be given unto him or her. Press down, shaken together, running over, shall men and women give into your bosom. And to know that you're making a difference in other people's lives, I don't think that there's a better feeling that you can have to know that somehow either your time or your money is making somebody's life a little bit better. If we all did that, even if you don't have money to give, you can give your time, your energy, your talents, but whatever you give back, you get to keep. Do you want to feel that your heart is full, that you've actually done something that is beyond you? You need to give back. The times when you're feeling the lowest, the times when you're feeling the most down, that's the time you need to be giving back. Because when you give back from there, it creates a sense of abundance. It creates within you a sense that you have more to give. And by having that sense that you have more to give, you start to tap in to that inner resource that allows you to do more, be more, have more, and create more in your own life as well. When you start giving, you become part of a community of givers. You start attracting people like you. And there's nothing better than being part of a community of people that are giving back to the world. Because they have a much bigger vision. They are here for changing the world in a big way. And when you give back, it gives you a sense of that connectedness. And it's so important because it allows us to know that we're not alone. And I can't stress how important it is to realize that we are all a part of the same quest. Someone once 
said that there are two types of people in the world, givers and takers. The takers sometimes eat better, but the givers always sleep better. How many people do you know that sit there and say, oh, I really need to lose the weight, and then they keep eating unhealthy foods? How many people do you know that sit there and say, oh, I can't stand my job, and then they keep going back to that same job day after day after day? How many people do you know that sit there and say, oh, I'm not happy in my relationship, but they go home every day to that same person that they don't love anymore? You cannot invest any more in a future that doesn't exist. Life is unpredictable, and you've got to be flexible and versatile and be willing to make the adjustments necessary that will move you in the direction of your goal. And you've got to ask yourself, am I on course? Am I seeing the results that I want to see? You've got to monitor yourself and continue to execute in the direction that's giving you the most positive feedback. mistakes that people make is heading down the wrong road for far too long. There's no reason for that. Once you realize you're going the wrong way, as quickly as you can, stop and get back on track. It is still a learning experience. Once you figure out what the lesson is, put on the brakes. Don't go any further. Lesson learned. Take it with you. Put it in a safe spot. You can use that information later and then move in the right direction. Think in terms of when was the last time you had a big east to west smile on your face? When was the last time you felt joy in your heart? And when was the last time you knew you were on track? And then put together a plan of action of how you can get back to that place. If you're going down the wrong path, do you really do you really want to change? And if you do, step back and say, I want to change. And whether you're going down that path for one week, one year, or 10 years, you have the right to change. It's your life. One small move in another direction can be right for you and take you from going from stuck to unstuckable. And when you're in that situation, there's no stopping you. It's like going from being stopped to being unstoppable. And when you have that feeling, it's amazingly empowering. So if you feel that you're doing something that is not good for you or is not going to help you with your final destination, be aware, be smart, and make a different choice. It's that simple. is that place we find within the depths of ourselves where we take an action even if fear is present. Nobody is born with courage. As a matter of fact, most of us are afraid. The difference between the brave person and the coward is that the brave person confronts their fears and does it anyway. The coward allows the fears to control them. Fear, what is that false evidence appearing real? We have to find a way to move beyond it and to be unstoppable and to be relentless and know that we can be the courageous beings that we were designed to be. Courage is something deep within that allows you to step forward, step into that greatness, step into the risk, and do it anyway. A big part of courage has to do with one's confidence. If one takes the unknown to the known, you will become more confident. Take the unknown to known by doing research, by gathering information, by reading books, by really pulling information, 
Every way that you can take the unknown to the known, you'll be more confident. More confident, more courageous, more action, more success. You have that spark of greatness in your heart. You have that calling, that pull that is saying, let's take that difficult path. Let's hit that summit. Let's take that adversity and let's meet it with full force and with courage. And when you start to feel courage, it seems like the universe supports you with that and gives you more. It gives you more energy to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. What are you doing right now? That's scary. You're not scaring yourself. You're not stretching yourself. You're not empowering yourself. You're staying safe. And as far as I'm concerned, if the fear isn't great enough, then the goal probably isn't big enough. So even if you're afraid, take that first step. I promise you won't regret it. With every step I take, purpose, every path, opportunity, every failure, confidence. When I didn't think there would be a tomorrow, there was. I am still learning. I was born in Hong Kong, second daughter of a very traditional Chinese family, which if you know anything about traditional Chinese families, that's a very bad positioning. My parents were not, especially my mother, was not very happy to get in the second daughter. In fact, um, to put it mildly, she was rather upset about it to the point that she left me in the hospital for the thir first three days. My birth was followed by the birth of three boys, so it really cemented my position as being very unwanted. And from there, I really experienced what one would call being an abused, neglected child. From there, I was blessed to have a grandfather who gave me my name, Hei Li. With that name, I knew that somebody really cared about me and thought I was worth something, that I was gonna be destined to be something great. So with that in my internal makeup, I was able to circumvent and escape some of the mental abuse that I, and physical abuse I was experiencing. And life was pretty tough, but not as tough as what I found out at age 11 that my classmate Rebecca had. She and her family of five total lived in a room and shared a kitchen and bathroom with two more families and they didn't even have enough to eat. I realized that there were people in life in much, even much worse shape than I was. And I wanted to make a difference in their lives because it didn't seem fair, it didn't seem just that with two working parents that they couldn't feed and clothe the family properly and so my mission in life, my compass point was to make a positive difference. I'm with that knowledge, packed up my bags and came to America as a young student, working my way through school, did my undergraduate and graduate degree in four years in foods and in nutrition and economics, my master's in economics, so that I could go help make a positive difference in people's life. I stepped forward again, found a job, with a company that had the same perspective as I did, and more than that, they were willing to take me as I was, a small immigrant woman of color, and take me and rate me and promote me based on my merits. Great story for me, because having been discriminated on every account by that time, that was a wonderful place to go work, make a difference, and that was May Department Stores International, which is now known as the Macy's Group. I joined them, and as they can say now, the rest is history. I went from there, Vice President of Nike, President of Reebok Apparel Products and Retail Group, and CEO of Veda. And leaving all that to start my own foundation, because I never forgot whether when I was working as a corporate individual or as a personal life, that my purpose, my compass, was to make a positive difference. So when I was with Reebok, we were able to establish labor standards throughout the world of how our manufacturers would treat their employees, what kind of hours they could keep, what kind of ventilation, lighting, 
all the things that so, so many of us in America take for granted had to be established. And there was something that made, made a difference for all the workers that we work with, but eventually the whole industry. It's something I'm really quite proud of because I remember the times when I was young and did that myself. People ask me at times, what, what about your mother? What is she doing now? Isn't she so proud of you? And the short and long answer is, well, no. And people are so disappointed when they hear that. They think, oh, that must be so devastating. But I say, stop for one moment. If you're looking for proof from outside, whoever it is, you will never be happy. You have to allow them to be who they are and for you to be who you are and just accept that. My father died many years ago in a plane crash, but before he died, I felt like we had peace. Even though he never told me in so many words he was proud of me, I know in some level he was. So for me, I'm very at peace with my family and I appreciate who they are, who they were and what they've given me and I'm really very grateful. The one thing I want everybody to know is that you, every one of you, have what it takes to get what you want. It's inside of you. Just go back inside. Don't listen to the tapes from outside from everybody else telling you what to do, what to love, who to date, what job to have, what car to drive. You know what it is that you need. Go back to your inner wisdom. Listen to your voice, the voice that has been silenced by all this outside tapes. When you get back to that point, find out what is your compass point, and from there, you will live the life that you are born to live. And I promise you, you will find the peace and happiness you're after. The journey within. Perhaps the greatest journey you can take is the journey into the hidden treasures of your mind and the eternal wisdom of your heart.